Hi everyone, it's me. I'm back. Today I'm going to talk about Fire by Kristen Kishore. This is the sequel to Graceling. It's not really a sequel, it's more of like a companion novel. It's set in the same world, but it follows a completely different character and it's set in like a completely different location and in a different time period as well. I think this takes place like 50 odd years before Graceling. You don't have to read them in order, you can read any book in the series in any order you want. Um, there's three of them. I haven't read the third one and I'm not going to. This one follows a girl called Fire. She's like some kind of royal. She's called Lady Fire, so whatever that means. Basically, she's just like this insanely beautiful girl who can control people's minds and she can also kind of like leech out information from people. Um, she doesn't really want to use her power that much. She feels guilty controlling people's minds and stuff. Um, she doesn't really do it unless it's absolutely necessary. Basically, this kingdom that she lives in is in the midst of a war. There's like spies everywhere. There's like a few different kingdoms that are like fighting each other. Her um, ability to like control people's minds and stuff is quite a useful tool and the kingdom need her help essentially. So yeah that's pretty much what it's about. If it sounds interesting to you go ahead and read it. In my unprofessional opinion Graceling isn't that good and I would recommend just reading this one instead. I'm gonna talk about as many non-spoilery things as I can before I have to talk about spoilers so if you haven't read the book if you want to hear my like non-spoilery thoughts on this book you can stay until I tell you to leave, okay? We'll start with the beginning. Um, the prologue. I thought the prologue was great. We get a lot of backstory for the villain in Graceling in this book. I kept wanting to read it. I loved hearing about the backstory for King Lech. I thought for some reason that we were going to follow King Lech in this book, but we, we didn't. Although I don't think it was necessary. I think it would have been a lot better if we just took all the unnecessary backstory for, the, for King Lech and just put it in Graceling where it made sense. It seemed really pointless in this book, but I think it would have been so useful and so great in Graceling. I think if anything, it was just for that like really cheap crossover effect between the books where it's like you read the second one and it's like a cool little easter egg for you to see him in this book. I don't know, it was weird. I think it just should have been in the first book essentially. Um, but the prologue was great. As for Fire, the main character, I think she had a very similar personality to Katza. Um, they were both like really strong female leads. Um, strong in different ways of course, like Katza was physically strong but mentally a weak bitch. And Fire was like mentally strong but physically weak. So it was interesting to see the opposite. Although I will say there was so much more character development in this book than in Graceling. There was a lot of character development, not just in the sense of like her figuring out how to use her power and like becoming more comfortable with using it and stuff, but just she was less of like a scared, weak kind of person. You could really see her become more brave and you could see her start to stand up for herself a lot more. She was very easily pushed around by people in the beginning and like especially with this other side character called Archer, which I will get into in a minute. Oh my god, he made me want to jump off a fucking fat cliff. Oh my god, I hated him so much. We'll get into him in a minute. And she, you know, marched to the beat of her own drum more towards the end, which was really great to see. So I really liked that about this book. This book had a much stronger plot than the first one. There was also a lot more focus on the characters, which I really liked actually. Um, all of the side characters in this book had really distinct personalities and I think were developed quite well. We were also given a decent amount of backstory into like a lot of the main side characters. Yes, yeah, another thing that I think was done a lot better, the writing. The writing was okay. The writing was pretty similar to the first one. Pretty simple, pretty easy to follow. One thing that I think could have been done better with the writing is just explaining concepts a little better. Kind of like with, um, how she actually controls people's minds. You know, it was written in more of a like, I take control of his mind. I make him do this. I don't think it was explained well enough, personally. She's not a graced character though, which is something that confused me. The magic system was a lot different. Like there's no graced people here. 
Like obviously they exist, but that like no one in this book is graced except for King Lek as a kid. They have this whole monsters concept, like colorful monsters or some shit, and the monsters have abilities. I don't understand why that needed to happen or be a thing. I didn't understand it at all in the beginning. I felt like it was really badly set up, or maybe I just didn't read it properly, whatever, but I could not get the fucking hang of it until like halfway through the book and I realized, like figured out the whole monster concept. Even after I fully understood it, I wasn't a fan. I just, just, it wasn't something that I liked. Um, also the romance in the book. The romance in this book was also really slow burning. It was nothing like the first one with the fucking insta love and oh my god. It was done a lot better in this one. This one felt way less forced. It, you could definitely tell that the author had put a lot more time into like slowly bringing them together instead of just one conversation and then bam, they're in love. So I really appreciated that. I did have a few issues with this book, but I can't really talk about them without spoiling a whole bunch of shit. So yeah, I'm going to end the non-spoiler section here. If you haven't read the book and you want to go read it, then go ahead. You can come back and watch the rest of this video after you've finished it if you want. So if you haven't read the book, go away now. One thing that I think needed to be explained a whole lot better was this whole concept with fire can control people's minds, but them also being able to close their minds off to her. I think if regular people are going to be able to close their mind off to being mind controlled, I think it should have been explained just a little bit better. It's like she says how she kind of like tries to tap into their mind, but they're closed off or like she's digging through some of their thoughts or whatever, but they're like hiding some of them from her. How though? Like that doesn't make sense. How does someone close off certain thoughts to someone? Which I was like, okay, but like explain how they do it though. Like explain why they're able to do that. I don't mind that it's like a far-fetched concept that people can do that because after all this is a fantasy book, but as long as it's explained a bit, this new, like she brought in this new magic system and then didn't really develop it that well. At least to me. Maybe I'm just a dumbass and didn't fucking get it, but like I read every word on every page, like I should have understood it and I didn't. So, um, what else did I want to talk about? Archer. Archer. Fucking hell. Oh my god. I hated this guy so much. Oh my god, no. He was just so controlling of fire, so jealous, just a dick, and he was just bitchy, and he was just the worst fucking type of person. Like, like threatening everyone because because someone looks a fire. Like taking people off her station because they're too friendly with him. That like he's such a douchebag and he just goes around like fucks all these other girls. And like, but Katza can't even look at another guy. Like Oh my god, I hate you. He basically is a massive fucking dick to fire and just does asshole things the whole time. The most beautiful girl in the kingdom, like outrageously good looks. She can literally be with any, anyone she wants and she chooses to stay with this fuckwit. And I was like, girl, sort yourself out. Like this guy is fucked. He just did not deserve her at all. I can't even, I can't even talk about this guy. I hated him so much. And then he died, right? I was happy when he died. One death that didn't shake me at all. It was like, oh my god, Archer died. And I was like, this has been a success for everyone. Um, another thing. There was like a copious amount of plot twists in this book, which normally I'm not the hugest fan of like so many fucking plot twists out of nowhere. And I'm like, what is even, what even is happening anymore? Like, I will say though, they were done pretty well here. Some of them were completely fucking stupid and completely unnecessary. Um, like Brigan having a daughter. Uh, sure. In my opinion, there was no point to Princess Hannah. Like, what? Why? But most of the plot twists, I think, were seeded really well. All of the characters were so interconnected and you didn't realize just how connected all of these people were until all of these plot twists were unfolded. Uh, most of the plot twists were to do with like, this is actually this guy's father and oh my god he killed him and like this, you know what I mean, like these people are related and, and like the nanny is actually Fire's grandma and like all, you know what I mean? Everyone just ended up being so connected with each other, which was pretty cool, but it was also like, why? Not gonna lie, felt really excessive, but it was also not done in a completely ridiculous, stupid way either. 
like they didn't just come out of nowhere. They were actually seeded throughout the book and it actually felt like some thought was put into it. Yeah, that was, there was that. I don't really know what to think of it. It was excessive, but it made sense. So take that as you will. But yeah, if you want to talk about anything more specific about the book in the comments, um, feel free to do so. I would love to have a chat with you guys about the book. Just make sure that you write a spoiler warning before you like comment a whole bunch of spoilers just so you don't ruin it for anyone else. If you're not following me on all my other social media, all the links will be in the description. If you want to go follow me, you can do that. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So, thanks for watching. I will see you later. Goodbye.